This is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, I'm gonna get out here and give this front yard test orchard some needed attention. Let's get busy. This test orchard out here has been really wonderful. This is something I planted seven years ago and got me started in my fruit tree adventure. And so here, just to recap, I've got a couple of peaches, I've got a apricot, I've got this panamint nectarine, and then I've got three apples here, uh, an apple, beautiful low chill variety, Fuji and Gala apples over there. And then here I have this beautiful sweet pomegranate. Um, I don't know if you can see here, the, there's tons of fruit on here, probably, I don't know, maybe 30 pomegranate. Nice size, gets lots of uh, lots of sun. And I have this espaliered against this wall here. Um, now you can see here that it's totally grown away from the wall. And so uh, the few things that need to happen in this front yard orchard today, um, one, I need to uh, prune back a bunch of things. This pomegranate needs to be pruned way down. Um, that uh, gala apple over there, actually all of the apples and these, uh, especially this nectarine need to be pruned back. Some of the other stuff just needs to be tipped. And um, I have that pomegranate held against that trellis over there with some gardening tape. And I'm, I've got some heavier duty tape that I'm gonna use because some of it broke away. So I'm gonna kind of put it back up against that structure. So I'm gonna set the, set the camera up and you'll see I'm gonna get started first on, I'm gonna prune these guys, prune the stone fruit. Remember when we're doing pruning, we want to make sure that we're balancing the entire grouping of, uh, of trees. And so really what that meant in this case is bringing the nectarine way down to match with the apricot and peaches are doing. Um, not a ton of vigor, but you can see they're growing at different rates. So it's important to keep the, ch the vigor checked on this uh, nectarine. Hey kiddo, who do we have here? Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Where do, how do we get pumpkin? What happened? So my mom went to Amy's farm and she found him and he was crawling around because he had all this gunk in his eyes. And, but then she rescued him and we thought it was a girl and we named it Gracie, but we, but it was really a boy and so we called it pumpkin. So he's a, he was really sick when we first got him, huh? We took him to the vet and they kind of didn't give him that. His temperature was like nine degrees colder than he's supposed to be, but he's gotten bigger. He's eating so well now, feeling so happy for pumpkin that he's doing so much better now. So something I'm gonna focus on, you see here on this gala apple, this has the most vigor the Fuji has less in this and apple has always been a really compact little tree. It doesn't have a lot of vigor, but it has so much fruit on it really from even the first year that I put it in the ground. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is mainly just tipping the Anna to just kind of encourage some more lateral growth. I'm going to be tipping, largely just tipping the uh, Fuji over here, but I'm going to be checking the growth big time on this Gala to bring that height way down. Um, and to encourage a lot of vigorous side growth as opposed to these long running shoots. All right, so you see that I brought the vigor of this um, gala way down. Even though I was sacrificing probably some fruiting wood, probably some uh, fruiting spurs, there's a lot more balance in this grouping here. So now we're gonna get on to this pomegranate. There are two things I need to do. One is first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this back up to, against the trellis and then I'm gonna have an idea of where I need to make my cuts to keep the structure intact. One thing I need to wear though are gloves because these have some thorns and I don't wanna get stuck by them. Only has to happen once before you run out and get these. So let's get to that. Well, 
this worked out pretty good. As you can see, I brought the height down across the board. I created balance. I was able to get rid of anything that was growing into anything else. Remember, summer pruning, and this kind of is, differs from winter pruning in that you're really just trying to maintain size, um, height, and width. You come in in the winter time, and that's when you see all of the interaction between the branches, see if there's any detail pruning that needs to do. But for summer, I mean, you see I took the top off of that pomegranate over there, so it's a lot more kept. I took off the sides. And did you see how many pomegranates are just visible now? It's unbelievable how it's just, um, I didn't realize there were so many in there. I thought there were maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15. But looking at it, there are probably 30 or 40 pomegranate in there. And as I was pruning, I also found this uh, gala apple. Mmm. Mmm. This is good, man. Crunchy, sweet. That's a nice thing is when fruit gets hidden from me, I don't pick it too early. Oh, so good. Hey, these pomegranates are almost ripe. Easy way. I have a video on how to tell if a pomegranate's ripe, but this is exhibiting a couple of the things. You notice how this one in particular has gotten a little bit boxy and it's stopped being round. That means that the arils inside those seeds are getting bigger um, and swelling up with juice. Also, if you hold it and it feels a little bit heavy compared to how it looks, that's a good sign. And finally, if you flick it and it sounds, they say metallic, but it's actually more of like a wood block sound. So this one's probably ready to try. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, take a second right now and do it. And if uh, you haven't hit that notification bell, do it. That way you'll know when new videos come up, you see the progress of what's going on. And uh, hey, whether you've got one tree in your orchard or 500, till next time, stay busy.